Welcome back to another episode of The Whale Table. Today, we're kind of prepared for all the different eventualities. We've got the deer rifle, we've got the rabbit rifle, but most importantly, in the backpack, I have an eel trap, or also known as a fike trap. So we're gonna take that all the way down to the creek, and we're gonna drop that in overnight with some chicken necks, and hopefully attract a whole bunch of nice, juicy eels. All right, so beautiful. We've made it down to the river. Oh, it's, just a, it's just a stunning spot, eh? Time after time, I'm just amazed at how beautiful New Zealand is, um, especially by the water. So we found this section of water here, which is just a little, it was quite rapid further down, so we've just tracked up a little ways, and it's nice and calm over here. Uh, you can see the water levels are, are right up because of the rain that we've just had. But we've just sort of found this like nice, slow flowing little corner um, and I know for sure that there's eel in here so we're just going to drop the eel trap in here get some chicken necks in there and bait it up and um, come back first thing in the morning and see what's in it all right so this is kind of a modern but um, still a fairly traditional eel trap which has basically got these um, multiple hoops which are which go from small to bigger and each of these hoops has got a chamber and each one of these chambers has got an entrance that progressively gets smaller as you get down the hoops at the end here we've got a net which has got floats at the top and weights at the bottom so the net's going to sit in the water like this it'll be lifted up by the weights and then sunk by the weight um, sorry lifted up by the floats and sunk by the weights is what I mean so this whole thing sits in the water like this all stretched out and it basically directs the eels in and then here in the last chamber which is since shut you're going to have the bait so the eels are basically going to swim down the river hit that net smell the, smell the, uh, the bait and then get funneled from chamber to chamber to chamber and then get caught in the last chamber because they can swim in but they won't be able to find their way back out um, yeah so it's, it's quite an effective trap for eel eel have a very keen sense of smell so some, uh, some old chicken necks and some meats in the water is definitely going to attract some meals. Um, the only thing is, you got to make sure it's tied up properly and doesn't go drifting um, down the river. Obviously the next morning, we're going to try and be a little bit quiet because there's also deer and pigs in here and you know, you never know. <clears throat> but the eel trap's in the water and I've never said one before. <laughs> so I'm really curious to see if there's any eels in it. Let's find out. I am frustrated. With the ambition of doing as many forms of capturing wild food as possible, comes the reality that you'll suck at some things. I hadn't set the net properly. But if I am anything, it's determined. So before heading off, we decide to set the net once more. And while the fike trap is sulking to hopefully attract at least one eel, we go on exploring the bush. It's early in the morning and you never know what you might find if only you look. In this case, we find a nice spring flush of woody mushrooms, which of course I don't hesitate to harvest. Okay, so um, last night I set the trap and being new and an amateur for some things, I let it get twisted up and so <laughs> what should have been full of eels had none because the entrance was twisted. But we've just seen some and I've checked, just checked it back in the water and so we just went for a little bit of a hunt, found a mean pig trail. Um, but we just chucked the trap back in here because we saw some eels around here. Let's <laughs> cross this time around and get an eel.
Uh, yes! Look! <laughs> oh my god, look at him! Oh, yeah. That is a beauty of him. It's the, uh, it's the first eel that I've ever caught, and it's the size of a eel. Um, there's something very special about these, these things, eh? They're not, I don't know, they're just not just normal fish. So that was a real gift. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take this eel and cook it. And honor it. Māori had, um, a lot of respect for eel and it must have been a, a, an immense food source for them. So many places have, like the, we have the Kai Tuna River, Kai food tuna eel. Um, it's just an, a special thing. Um, and it's like it's a big eel but it's not so big that I would say it has to go back in the water. You know, they get much bigger than this and then they get really close to that um, old age and the spawning age. So um, I feel like that this was a gift from the river and I feel like to me I'm comfortable taking this home and turning it into kai. beautiful fish that we have in New Zealand. Um, yeah, just super honored and super stoked that we managed to harvest one of these eels out of this river. And um, I'm gonna take this guy straight home and put him in the smoker and he's gonna provide some really beautiful meals. I really look forward to eating this. Wild, wild food. North America use now it as uh, fiddleheads. So yeah, we're just gonna harvest a few of them before you head out of here and provide some more kai. Alright, so welcome back to my garage once more. Here uh, we have this beautiful specimen of an eel. Um, and essentially all we did yesterday when we came back is I hung it into the chiller for a little bit just to cool down. And then we popped it into, into the chili bin and we basically just covered the whole fish in a nice thick layer of salt. Um, that process is called dry salting. Alrighty, so this eel is covered in salt. Um, and it's pretty much ready for us to process. So I'm going to use a blunt knife to carefully scrape all the salt off either side of the fish, making sure that none of the slimy bits are left um, and it's ready for us to process uh, further. So eels, just like every other fish, have a uni hole. And in order to take the guts out, we quite simply insert the knife there and just work away all the way up the gut cavity. Right up under the jaw. Opening the fish right up. Look at that beautiful meat. Eel liver. Be very curious to see what that tastes like. Uh, I'm just going to have a look inside of here to see what this eel has been snacking on. It's always very interesting to notice. Um, I baited this trap with chicken necks, so it would be totally unsurprising to see that there's entire chicken necks in there. One, two, Three of them, wowzers. Another half. Must have bit that right off. 
Jeepers. Nothing else. So, oh, maybe, what's this? Worm of some description. Right, an earthworm. Interesting. Right on. So now that we've uh, scraped the dry salted eel and taken the guts out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make up a, a proper brine, which is water plus salt, um, and then I'm going to submerge the whole fish in the brine for another few hours before I put it on the smoker. Now, um, <laughs> when you Google brine recipes, what you'll usually come across is a recipe of one cup of salt, kosher salt, per one gallon of water. Now, a gallon of water is something like 3.75 liters, I think. Um, I don't quite have that as a measurement. Uh, what I do have is a three liter container of water. So I'm gonna take three liters of water um, with just a little bit less than a full cup of salt. And I'm gonna make that up and pour it over the eel. And then I'm probably gonna have to do that once or twice more in order to cover the whole fish. So we've just trimmed the eel into three manageable portions, which are going to go into the broil canning. In a second, I'm just going to lather them with liberal amounts of uh, uh, sea salt and brown sugar. That just really helps to bring out the flavor when they're on the smoke. Right, as you can see, the barbecue is well and truly smoking and we're good to go. Um, this is a broil king, which means it has uh, basically charcoal uh, at the bottom. I've added a little bit of oak wood and fresh cherry wood to it to create the smoke. And then it also has a water pan inside, which basically just circulates moisture throughout the barbecue, keeping everything nice and succulent. Let's get these bad boys on here. All right, so we've smoked up the tuna and then basically uh, fired up the barbecue again and finished it with some soy sauce on some heat. Uh, we've also added to it some uh, foraged wood ear mushrooms and some pico pico and made a salad with wild avocado. Mm -mm. This is almost where we want to be with food. This is an almost an entire meal sourced from holy wild foods. I've been fishing for a long ass time and I've caught my fair share of fish. But eel, for whatever reason, hasn't been one of those fish. I've always thought about it, but I've never really done anything about it. Until now. And let me tell you this, this eel was incredible. I know now why this animal was so heavily revered. Its flesh is rich and fatty and flavorsome. And to top it off, the rest of this meal, bar a few minor ingredients, was also locally foraged, right down to the wood we used for smoking. I'm not sure why exactly, but somehow sharing a meal like this invokes more pride and joy in me than any material possession. Call me simple, if you will, but by God, I will never forget this eel, nor will this have been my last. Now let's find the fans, find the bunnies. Do you see any bunnies? Uh, I don't think so. There might be one just behind that silver shed. Thank you. 